What's up everybody, Greg here with Lens Pro to Go and Lens Rentals, and I'm back with another things to know. Today, checking out the new RGB light from Digital Sputnik, the Voyager. This light was part of an Indiegogo campaign last year that raised almost $800,000. And needless to say, after the success of the DS1, which is used on Star Wars Rogue One, I was really excited to check this new light out and see what it could do. I wanna say a big thanks to Digital Sputnik for sending one out to me early so I could play around with it and check it out. And I also wanna add a disclaimer that I am using a pre-release version of the app, so some of the user interface and other experiences are gonna be changing by the time the actual production release one comes out. That being said, let's start off with talking about the build. This thing is super solid and weighs in just under two and a half pounds. This light has a super sleek and really simplistic design. On the top, there's a set of RGB LEDs. Then you have two buttons, one that powers on and off the unit, and then you have another one that is used to switch from master to slave mode if you're using a bunch of them in a configuration. At the end of it, there's a charging port that you can use to either power the unit while it's on or to charge the internal battery. And then along the back side, there's these ridges, which is used for a mounting bracket. So you can do some really easy and fine tune adjustments with where the placement of the light is. You can slide it and boom it up over something. You can also easily rotate the light vertical too, if you want to have some cool catch lights in the eye, or you want to use them as practicals in your shot for something like a music video. On the front, there's this hard plastic tube, which is used as protection. And it's also what you use as the filter or diffusion holder. So right now we just have a soft diffusion in there. So we get a really soft light, but you can take that out if you want and just have the LEDs bare bulb with the protection. But by far the coolest thing about this light is that it's totally submersible. And that's why there's such a sleek and simplistic design with only the two buttons. There can't really be an interface because it can go underwater for up to 24 hours. And you can do that down to four meters or about 13 feet. There's also a deep dive version, which can go even deeper than that, up to 10 meters or about 34 feet. Along with the underwater capabilities of this light, there's also some really cool features, but they're mostly software based. For one, it's a RGBW. That means you can do pretty much any color on the spectrum. You can go to your reds, your greens, your blues, anything in between, as well as your white light or your Kelvin color temperature. So this ranges from 1500 all the way up to 10,000 with presets for 3200 and 5600. At 3200 Kelvin or tungsten, this light has a CRI of 95. And if you go to the daylight side, it's gonna have a CRI a little bit lower of 91. With all the color flexibility of the RGB and the white light spectrum, you can do some pretty fun and unique things with this light. But Digital Sputnik goes a step further and they actually add in a bunch of preset modes that you can use to really get the most out of this light. The first one is Paint Lamp and this allows you to control the whole lamp's color from doing a solid color of just the RGB spectrum or you can do a gradient so it goes from one color faded into another color that you can choose. There's also some flicker settings so there's a fire preset which flickers yellow and orange so you get this look of fire which is really great for practical use. There's also police lights, some different chase modes which are really cool to make it look like your subject is going through a tunnel or something like that. There's DMX and then a super interesting one but I don't know how effective or useful it'll actually be but you can take your camera on your phone through the app and you can aim it at something and the lamp will replicate that color. So if you're shining it at something red, like my laptop case, it'll turn red on the light. If you're aiming it at something that's tungsten or daylight, it will replicate that light back onto the Digital Sputnik Voyager. If you go back into the paint light tab, you can also switch that over to paint pixel tab. And this allows you to paint individual pixels with specific colors. So you can paint every single LED grouping of RGBW to whatever color you want. So you can have this section be pink, this section be green, and this section be teal or any combination of that or change them up and sporadically have them throughout. So you have some greens, pinks, blues, reds, whatever colors all throughout the light in any order that you want. This is a neat tool if you want to have some really unique eye lights or something like that, or just have a really nice color palette of a gradient on a wall. Lastly, let's look at some of the quirks that I've found while playing around with it. There's not many things that I don't like, but one of the biggest things is the output. There's not a ton of output with this light or brightness level, and it would be really hard to do the full setup with the two foot tube as your main or key light. 
In a smaller setup, you might be able to get away with the two foot tube, but I would highly recommend going for the four foot if you wanna use that as your main source of light. These two foot ones are really great for those special effects kind of things, either adding a splash of color on the background or doing like the police lights and having something that's off camera that's not really the main focus. And the only other downside that I've found so far is that it being submersible and being able to go underwater, there really isn't an interface or any sort of knobs or controls on the unit itself. So everything has to be done through the app. And this app connects to the light through Wi-Fi instead of over Bluetooth. So you can't use any other like internet connection services like messaging, email, or any other thing while you're on set. So you're gonna have to keep switching between your Wi-Fi's. I would recommend grabbing a separate device to just be the controller for all of your lights, like an iPad or some other tablet. But I don't wanna say anything else about the app right now because I do know some of the stuff is gonna change before it gets released, but you got a little bit of preview of what it's gonna look like. So if you're wondering when the release date is for this and when you can get your hands on one, it's gonna be later this year in either late August or early September. There's gonna be links in the description below if you wanna learn more about it, check out Digital Sputnik's site or check out their Indiegogo page which has stopped funding but you can see a little more information about them. If you have any questions about these lights, make sure to leave them down in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. If you guys enjoyed this video and wanna see more just like it, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for new videos every single week and I'll see you in the next one.